hello everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel how are you guys doing today i hope you guys are well today guys i'll be checking out this interesting video from ben shapiro and it's titled Elon musk demolishes macuban and richard mado you guys i'm excited for this if you are yet to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing and without much ado let's see what ben shapiro has for us in this video well, meanwhile, Elon Musk is out there on the campaign trail, and I gotta say, he's a better surrogate than Josh Shapiro is being right now, which is kind of a shocker. So out on the campaign trail, he went after Mark Cuban. He has a, a bit of a fight going with Mark Cuban because Mark Cuban has been making all the rounds and declaring that that he is just the, the, the greatest surrogate for Kamala Harris ever. Musk went directly after him the other day. This is pretty serious. Uh, have you ever seen Mark Cuban and Rachel Maddow in, in the same area at the same time? Or no, could they I, possibly I, be the same person? I, I, I think they, uh, they, might, they might be the same person. <laughs> so, yeah, Elon is out on the campaign trail. He's gotten himself into some hot water because, of course, he is now pledging to give away $1 million a day to voters for signing his political action committee's petition backing the Constitution. So this is driving legal scholars up a wall. Oh, my God, he's violating campaign finance because he is paying people to register to vote. Well, I mean, really, he's not. He is not. OK, so if you were going to bribe somebody to register them to vote, you'd go to their house and you say, I am going to enter you into a lottery for you to register to vote. If there is, however, for example, a, a petition, which is what he is doing, and you have to be a registered voter in order to enter to win the million dollars, is he paying you to register you to vote or is he basically offering you something to sign the petition? That's the question here. So the left now in attempt to get money out of politics, which is highly amusing because Alex Soros is taking a picture with a high profile Democrat every single day atop his Manhattan skyscraper showing that he is basically stuffing money into their pockets. They're now saying that Musk is intervening in the election too much. So CBS News is very mad about it. They say the ex owner had previously offered supporters forty seven dollars for each registered voter in seven battleground states that they could get to sign his petition. A nod to the fact that the winner of the two November 5th election will be the nation's 47th president. Rick Hassan, a UCLA law school political science professor, said, quote, though, maybe some of the other things Musk was doing were of murky legality. This one is clearly illegal. He pointed to a law prohibiting paying people for registering to vote or for voting. He said the problem is the only people eligible to participate in this giveaway are the people who are registered to vote. And that makes it illegal. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I'm not sure that that's actually the case, because if the eligibility to register for the for this lottery is that you have to be a voter, but you also have to have signed the petition. Is it about you having been a registered voter or about signing the petition? Apparently, Musk awarded a check during an event Saturday in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, to a man identified as John Dreher. A message left with the number listed for Dreher was not returned on Sunday. Musk will give out another check on Sunday as well. So legal experts are very upset about this. Now, I didn't notice legal experts being quite as upset about, say, the $300 million spent by Mark Zuckerberg and his wife, Priscilla Chen, back in 2020. You remember these were Zuckerbucks, which were disproportionately in Democratic-leaning jurisdictions to registered voters. So apparently, the basic idea there is if you pay a company to register voters, that is fine. If you, if you offer a lottery in which only registered voters are eligible, then that is a violation of campaign finance reform. All of this is just ridiculous. This is why campaign finance laws generally are ridiculous. If you're, if you're paying people to vote in a particular way, that, by the way, should be treated differently legally than even paying people to register to vote. It's just in my own personal opinion. If you're, those sorts of incentives are granted all the damn time. I mean, Democrats are constantly going door to door and basically granting incentives to people in order to get them to vote for a, for a particular party, let alone to get them to register to vote. So if the basic idea here is that registering to vote is good and incentivizing people to register to vote is good, that's still not the same thing as saying, I'm going to pay you a million dollars if you vote for Donald Trump, which is not what Elon Musk is doing right here. You guys, what are your thoughts on this video? Uh, do you think Elon Musk is breaking the campaign finance law? Because one thing I know is that the Democrats has been breaking this law for so long and nobody is calling them out. What are your thoughts on this video? Leave it in the comment section down below and let's continue watching you guys. Now, there's some who wonder why exactly Elon Musk is so invested in this particular election. The answer, of course, is that he is one of the biggest business people in human history and he has been been made subject to the predations of the federal and state government 
That's particularly true in California. So Elon Musk the other day laid out exactly how SpaceX was being regulated by the state of California, apparently explaining how they had to do an assessment about whether the rockets would come down and hit a whale. SpaceX had to do the study to see if, if uh, Starship would, would hit a shark. And I'm like, it's a big ocean, you know. Uh, there's a lot of sharks. It's not impossible, but it's very unlikely. And, uh, and, and said, well, you have to, you know, this is, I think, from, from National Marine Fisheries, one of the, you know, NIMF, it's called. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, they were like, well, you have to do the study on whether you're going to hit a shark. We're like, what? Um, and, and then, like, then I, we said, okay, well, fine, we'll, we'll, we'll do the analysis. And then, well, can you give us the shark uh, data? They're like, no, we can't give you the shark data. We're like, okay, well, then we're in a bit of a quandary. How, how do we solve this difficult, this, this shark probability issue? Uh, and and that's, they said, well, um, well, we could give it to our Western division, but we don't trust them. And I'm like, am I in a comedy sketch here? Um, and then, like, like they're worried about the shark density data, like the people who hunt sharks for shark fins somehow getting their hands on this shark dense, the shark data. And, and so eventually I think we, 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 we got the data and, and we could ru you know, ru run the analysis to say like, yeah, the sharks are going to be fine. Um, but, but they wouldn't let us proceed with launch until we did this crazy shark data. And, and, they, and, and then we thought, okay, well, now we're done. And they said, but what about whales? I'm like, <laughs> when you look at a picture of the Pacific, what percentage of the surface area of the Pacific do you see as whale? Because <laughs> I see it, look at a picture, I don't see any, it's like, you can't, where's a whale? And, and, and honestly, if, if the ship did hit a whale, it's like, honestly, that whale had it coming, because it's like the odds are so low. Yeah, so true. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's like like Final Destination, the whale edition. Mm -hmm. It's like fate had it in for that whale, you know. Um, wow. And so we have to do the whale analysis. And it's like, okay, yeah, the whales will be fine wow. too, you know. Um, it goes on and on, and then there's like, well, what if the rocket goes underwater, then explodes, and then the whales have hearing damage? Like, this is real. This is actually, and we're like, wow. the, look, if we could make a rocket go underwater and be a submarine, that would be like a feat of physics we could not accomplish. It's amazing. And you wonder why he's so invested, because Democrats are for this kind of stuff. They are. Apparently, according to Mario Nafal, who works fairly closely sometimes with Elon on Twitter, he said that uh, SpaceX was once forced to kidnap a SEAL and subject it to a strange experiment as part of regulatory compliance. Concerns over how the sonic booms from Starship launches might affect SEALs near Vandenberg site led SpaceX to strap a SEAL to a board, put headphones on it, and play sonic boom sounds to monitor its distress levels. The experiment was conducted twice. The SEAL reportedly stayed calm during both tests. Yeah, I mean, SEALs are trying to avoid, you know, the sharks and like dying in, in, in the ocean. <laughs> but this is, this is what the Democratic Party wants. I mean, this is why when, when they're talking about overregulation, this is what we are talking about here. And by the way, they, they can't stop themselves. So today, you remember that time that Kamala Harris said that she was anti-fracking? And then she came forward and she said that she was pro-fracking? Well, now, apparently, they are now walking back their support for fracking again. According to Andy Kaczynski, who is a very good reporter for CNN, he said the Harris campaign aide seems to be walking back her support for fracking on the campaign trail. A top climate campaign staffer told Politico Pro Notes she's not promoting expanding it and said she didn't promote increased leases for fracking in the Inflation Reduction Act. But Harris has repeatedly cited those leases in campaign events to shore up her bona fides on fracking. So she's trying to walk back her support for fracking in the middle of the election cycle, where she's running behind in Pennsylvania. Genius level stuff from this campaign. Wow, you guys, that was such an interesting one from Ben Shapiro. And I didn't know that Elon Musk is somewhat of a comedian because the way he was giving that speech, everything he said really, really made me laugh. But let me know what you guys think about everything Elon Musk complained about. And you guys think he has a reason for doing what he did in order for people not to elect the same government in because I can understand where he's coming from. Being a very good businessman and all of that, he needs to protect everything that he has worked for. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.